All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are this morning, and is then posted to our website in the archives, so you can watch it at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Um, both the live show and the recorded archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for all libraries in Nebraska. We provide training, consult consultation, grants to them, and we serve all the types of libraries. So you will find things on our show that are for uh, Publix, K-12, academic, museum, corrections, uh, really our only criteria that is something to do with libraries, something a library is doing, something um, interesting we think they could be doing, uh, services or products we'd like to share and, and, and out there. So um, we really run the gamut. You never know what you'll find in our, in our archives or in our upcoming shows. <laughs> um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on the show to present about things we are doing here in Nebraska, or specific services or things we're offering here through the Library Commission. But we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Um, on the line with us is Alan Bailey. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Krista. How are you? I'm doing all right. You're having a nice day here today, actually. It's still summer in Nebraska. Same. Five degrees. Go figure. <laughs> Um, and he is um, from East Carolina University. He's a professor there um, in their uh, Teaching Resources Center. But he's also, as you can see, involved in the Credit Scott King Book Awards, which uh, those of us in libraries, I'm sure, are aware of them. Um, but they're celebrating a big anniversary this year, and he's going to tell us all about the awards, history of it, and everything that's been going on, and how maybe you and your libraries could uh, participate a little more with it, too. So I'll just hand it over to you, Ellen, to take it away. Thank you, and thank all of you for participating this morning. I do welcome questions, and I do hope that you will learn a lot from this webinar, and you will start using the Credit Scott King books even more than you're using them now. So let's go ahead and get started. I always like to start with a little bit of history. Um, the Credit Scott King Book Awards was actually founded in 1969, at um, ALA Annual in New Jersey. Um, two librarians, Mrs. McKenzie and Mrs. Greer, had a conversation about how African-American authors and illustrators were not being recognized for their work. And they, they were overheard by a publisher, um, John Carroll, and when he heard them talking, he said, well, why don't we start, start a book awards ourselves. And from that one conversation, the ball did get rolling. So um, in 1979, the um, Credit Scott King actually was a task force. And you can see the rest of that information. And in 1982, the award became officially recognized by ALA. And since 2003, our title has been the Credit Scott King Book Awards Committee. And we are actually a part of ALA's Ethnic and Multicultural Information Exchange Roundtable. And you will hear me call that EMERC because that is a mouthful to say from time to time. And you're we all have our acronyms in libraries. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I'd like to um, at least introduce them at the very beginning. And you'll hear me call um, Credit Scott King CSK as well. Yeah, I know that's a hashtag for it too. I don't know if anybody saw when we were posting about that. This a CSK fifty. Yes, yes. So, so please, please, um, actually tweet about it. The awards are given annually, and it's to outstanding African American authors and illustrators, and these are for books for children and young adults. And I like to just stop here and just really, um, just make you realize that. These books must demonstrate an appreciation of African-American culture and universal human values. That's important to me because it has to be more than just a good book. Um, it has to 
actually demonstrate that appreciation of um, African American culture and universal human value. So there has to be that cultural piece connected to the book for it to be a winning book. Um, the book commemorates the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and it actually encourage, um, honors his wife, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, um, for all of the work that she did during the time her husband was alive and after his death. Um, Mrs. King was just not the wife that was just there for photographs and things of that nature. She actually was very involved in the civil rights movement. Um, a lot of the events that did happen were stemmed from some of her ideas and some of the work that she was doing. So she did continue her work for peace and world brotherhood after her husband was assassinated. The first book award was given to um, Miss Lily, Lily Patterson, and this was in 1970. And Fittingly, it was a biography of Martin Luther King Jr. that was called Martin Luther, Martha Luther King Jr. Man of Peace. So that was 1970 when the first award was actually given. It took a few more years before the first Illustrator Award was given, and this was given in 1974. And the book was Ray Charles, and the illustrator that won the first award was George Ford and it was written by Sharon Bell Mathis. Now with the Coretta Scott King, um, there are several book awards that the committee gives out. And then there's also a couple of other things that are involved with the committee. So I would like to tell you these, um, a little bit about these things. Um, there is an author award. So one author award is actually given and Honor books can be given. Honor books are not mandated, but they can be given if the jury thinks there are books that are worthy of honor awards. There is the Illustrator Award, and just like the Honor Award, the jury can, um, can give honors to some books, but it's not mandatory that they do so. This is a wonderful uh, award, is the John Steptoe New Talent Award. This award can be given to an author or an illustrator, or can given, be given to both, who, um, who have published or illustrated um, three or less books. That's what makes them a new talent. And I am talking about children's book. So um, this new author or illustrator can actually um, be awarded this award. And once again, the jury does not have to um, award any honor books. Um, they don't have to award any new talent books, but it's always an option for them to do so. And I would also like to say that we are celebrating the 15th anniversary of John Septo New Talent Award in 2020. We won't have a big celebration quite as big as the 50th committee, but we will be recognizing this award. We also have the Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement, and most children's librarians will recognize the name of Virginia Hamilton for the great work that she did. Um, with this award, on even years, it is given to an author or an illustrator um, honoring a body of work that they have done in children's literature, especially for African-American children. And on even years, um, the award is given to a practitioner who has promoted African-American literature and the Coretta Scott King books throughout his or her career. And something else that the committee does um, that a lot of people don't realize, but it's quite beneficial. There is a Coretta Scott King book donation grant. This grant is open to schools, agencies that work with children. And what this, this book grant does, the winners of the grant receive copies of all of the award-winning books, and this include the honors as well as the ones that actually won the award. And they also receive an, a, a, a large selection of books that were submitted for the award but didn't win the award. So we're talking about a large um, collection. Um, 
Applications usually open up around January or February, so keep an eye out for that. But um, it's a great way to get books for your um, organization or your library. And I will say there is a grant process, of course, but it's not as complicated as a lot of grant processes are. So I like to call it an easy grant, but um, <laughs> it's a wonderful way to actually get a collection. Is there a question? Yeah, no, I was just actually looking at the page about the grants. That's something that I, um, I've uh, promote, uh, share about any grants that are available to libraries here to our, um, in Nebraska, and that's a new one. I'm gonna add it to my list of things. I was just looking at the website for it. Um, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, you're right, it doesn't have any, it's not, nothing is up yet about applications being open. Mm -hmm. um, please check back in the fall for 2020 application instructions, yes. Right, so it should, like I say, it's usually January or February when um, the call for application um, actually comes out open. But it's nice, it does have a list of the previous applicants as well, so if you're interested in possibly in talking to a previous winner, a library about, you know, their experiences with the grant that's great that you that's up out there for you and actually looking at that list you can also see the large assortment of libraries and agencies that have received the award and it's not i should say too it's not just limited to the united states i'm seeing here um the last 2018 one was given to a um, place in south africa yes art art aids art so it's one of those things that is based on needs that, and the criteria is actually um, spelled out there, what matrix we really yeah, need. Yeah, there's a lot of details. Yeah, we have a link to the um, website for the Credit Scott King Book Awards, and it's right there on the left in the menu, a link, um, like the second, third to the top, book donation grants. It's really easy to find the page, yeah. Yes, and when you actually, um, the links that I have in this presentation, um, that those links will take you to the Credit Scott King page and some of the specific pages that I will be talking about today. And I'll mention that while, I, while you're mentioning that too, that I didn't say at the beginning, I did talk about the archives that we have. We will have the slides as well, the slide presentation. So will be available afterwards along with the archive. Alan will send me his, his presentation here and we'll upload it along with the recording too, so you'll have access to all this information yourself. Great. Great. Here um, are covers of the 2019 award-winning books. If you have not read these books this year, go ahead and get your read in because in January 2020, we're going to award the new books for um, the, the new winners. So you might want to go ahead and read these before the new ones come out because I know you're going to want to read those as well. And you can just see the, the variety of books that we, we have here. A lot are historical. Um, you have fiction, you have nonfiction, um, you have some, some that are STEM related. So, so many ways you can incorporate these books. Some of them are great for summer reading. Um, Finding Langston, you have something about a historical person, but you also have something with poetry and literature. So there's a wide assortment every, every year when it comes to the winners and the honor books. Um, something else that we do have, we do have um, discussion guides. So this will help you if you're doing, um, if you're in a school system where you're actually um, maybe doing something with your standards and you're actually doing lesson plans around the Credit Scott King books as well as if you're in a public library or just any organization that might want to just have a book club, it gives you some things to get started. Um, the first discussion guide that we have on the web was in, in 2019, and we have it up to 2018. The 2019 discussion guide should be coming up soon. And the discussion guides are just simply beautiful. They I, it's just amazing what has been done with those guides and the information as well as the beauty of them. I think you would really enjoy them and children will enjoy them as well. Yeah, those are very useful. We we here um, do book club kits that we send out to libraries, a collection, you know, 
eight copies of a book and along with discussion questions and uh, lots of the book clubs um, at libraries or in communities really do benefit from those pre-written questions and discussion you know, they want to read a book but they don't know how to talk about it afterwards maybe you know who what should we talk about what should we ask each other about and those guides are so helpful to people reading them and the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, that's what we want to do. We want to put as much in your hands to get you going. Your librarians, you know, our job is to make people's lives easy. We want to give people the information they need to be successful. And that is what we do with the committee as well. We want to give you these resources, but we want to make it easy for you to use because we understand how busy you are and giving you as much as possible at the very beginning then all you have to do is put your creativity to it and put your own spin on it to make it a very successful program um, in your library, whether it's school or public. We also have the CSK Illustrations Gallery. Um, this, is the, this gallery actually has wonderful prints from um, our award-winning books. Um, there's a limited number of illustrations in the gallery now, but you can expect to see the number of prints expand over the next few years. It's one of the goals that we're working on is to get this gallery up and running again. But art classes, any sort of class, things for a backdrop for um, book discussions, these will be perfect in those to help assist. We do have two major CSK public publications, and we do hope you will purchase these in your library because the first one is the Coretta Scott King Awards, and this is our 50th anniversary um, volume, and it looks at all of our award books from 1970 through 2019. And this book will give you history of the committee, you get excerpts, and these could be excerpts from chapters, picture books, it could be illustration, it could be text, it could be all of that. And there's a wonderful subject um, index at the back of this particular publication. And that subject index will help you when you're, when you're doing your presentations. And another um, book that I think you should I have as well is, um, Pathways to Democracy. Um, it talks about our award books and it is a discussion guide, but it focuses on um, books that foster discussions about what it means to be a citizen in a democratic society. So we've actually looked at books that would fit that criteria and they're here in Pathways to Democracy. And once again, it's a discussion guide that will give you um, questions to get started, as well as things to help you with lesson plans. This is a resource that I am very happy to share with you. Um, it's called Teaching Books, and Teaching Books has resources for the titles that are recognized by the award since its conception in um, 1970. Now, I will tell you, um, Teaching Books is a large database and they do, I can't even tell you how many books, but it is a subscription-based database, but the owner of this company, Nick Glass, he is a firm supporter of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee. So this portal that I'm showing you today that deals with Coretta Scott King award-winning books is free. And as a librarian, I know I love that word and I know you love it too. So uh, when you're using Coretta Scott King books, using the particular portal I'm going to show you today, that is going to be absolutely free, no charge whatsoever. And these are just the statistics I saw from today because it'll, it's a very fluid database. Things are added daily, weekly, monthly. But at this, as, as of um, today, when it comes to the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, there are 4,163 resources just on these award-winning books. There's 3,476 videos, 377 book readings, and 541 lesson plans. So you can see there's a wealth of information um, in this database. 
And I'm actually going to take a moment to take us into teaching books. And please bear with me. Krista has been helping me do this, but we'll see how successful I am this time. And okay, it worked. <laughs> it did work. Yes. When you go into teaching books, this is going to be the opening page that you're going to see. Um, I'm not going to go through everything with that because you're librarians. I know how capable you are. But the main thing I want to show you is the sidebar that's on the left. Um, you can see how you can filter your results. If you just want some subcategories, which was the author, the illustrators, new talent, if you're doing grade level, your curricula areas. So if you wanted to do something with physical education, oh, there's 17. Health, there's 16. You can tell that our award-winning books are very high with English language arts as well as social studies. And art itself falls in, in there because of all these wonderful illustrations that are there. You can go by genre, the year published. So there's so much you can do. But even it goes a step further with this. If you just want some book lesson plans, you can click here and you'll see there are 174. I love doing a reader's theater. There are five scripts here. Um, they're book trailers. Um, and I know you probably have seen these, but the book trailers are just like movie trailers. And they, they can really get children geared up when it comes to um, reading. Um, I know we're good at book talking, but we can book talk a bit, but then add in one of those um, trailers, I think that would really enhance introducing books to children. And then there's actually 257 book readings where you can hear most of these will be the author or illustrator reading the books, but you will have other librarians reading and just look at the author interviews as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have different types of ways that you can see the authors. One of the things I like about this database is it brings authors and illustration illustrators to life for children, because I think a lot of times children don't see authors and illustrators as real people because it's sort of obscure. They just read these wonderful books, but they don't think about them as being people who go to the grocery store or, you know, have kids or things or, or any of those things. So um, I think it really brings um, them to life. And one of the things I use a lot is the audio name pronunciation because it will have the author or illustrator pronounce their names. And many of them will tell you a little bit about themselves, where they're from or where their name originated from. And we as librarians and educators, it helps as well if we're introducing something and it, we can't quite figure out how the author pronounces his or her name or the illustrator. So with this resource, it helps us as well. We do have a question. Someone um, as, isn't aware, um, familiar with the, the Reader's Theater. Um, can you explain what that is and how that works? Yes. Um, and, and Reader's Theater is even quite um, easy for you to adapt as well, because um, especially when you're doing something with children's books. Reader's Theater can be very simple because um, you have people who are usually you're sitting at a table or just in chairs out front. There are no costumes. Usually everyone just wears black. There are no, no scenery. It's usually a black setting, but you may use a couple of props here and there to enhance it. The participants, which mostly are the children, um, they do not have to memorize anything. With Reader's Theater, you can actually have the script in front of you and read. And so it's a matter of you presenting a work without actually doing all of the acting that comes along with it. But it does bring it to life because you do have the different voices. You can see people reading different voices and using a prop as a hat here and there, or a book here and there, or 
If it's something where a lamp is significant, you may have a lamp there that you can turn on and turn off. But it is a great way of um, introducing literature to children. And you think about it, it's enhancing their reading skills, it's enhancing their creativity skills, and the list just goes on and on. It's kind of like a minimalist theater production, but really focusing on the words because right. it's not all of the distraction of the, the, like you said, the set and everything. And they can, you know, imagine themselves from the words, which is what reading is all about, what it would actually look like to them. Exactly. And cool. you like would that. really be amazed sometimes how the children that sometimes seem very shy, Mm -hmm. see a different side of them when they are participating in reader's theater. Hmm. And it, it can bring them out of their shell because it gives them a chance to be very creative, but they're doing it as someone else. So you see a side that they, they don't, you don't usually see of them, but the more they do that, sometimes you can get them to um, be more extroverted or participate a lot more. Thank you so much for that question. Cool. And you backed your slides. Perfect. It worked. <laughs> um, you can also get resources from publishers. Um, almost all publishers now, if they actually have an award winning book, um, if you go to their web page, there will be a place that actually does resources. Once again, Ray Charles is the, is the first book to win the Illustrator Award, and it was actually published by Lee and Low Book. And now that I'm good at going back and forth, I'll even take you to I'll this you. Because they have dedicated an entire page to the book Ray Charles. Um, you have teacher's guides, you have interviews, and it also gives you other ways to do some things, um, reviews and comments about the book, um, actually have lesson plans. So this is just an example of what so many uh, publishers are doing now um, with this. And it looks like they also have one on Paul Robeson that um, was done by um, Eleanor Greenfield and um, George Ford. So it looks like those are there as well. So never forget to go to these publishers' websites when you're actually looking for activities or lesson plans for these award-winning books. How can you use some of these books? Of course, this is this list is very fluid. A lot of times people tell me different ways that they've used them and I add them to this list. So feel free to send me um, any ways that you actually use these books and I will definitely add it to um, my slides. Um, and on the very last slide, you will have my email address. So feel free to send them to me. But when you're talking about Coretta Scott King award winning books, if you're in a school system, think about K-12 curriculum. You can use these books daily. Because remember, African-American history and African-American books are not just for African-Americans, it's for everyone. So in your regular K-12 curriculum, and I'll show some examples of that, if you're talking about science, there are some books that you can actually use. Health, recreation, any of your topics, there are Coretta Scott King award-winning books that you can use in your curriculum. Of course, it's great to have during um, Black History Month. And also in February, there's a National African-American Read-In. And that would be something great to sponsor in your school or your public library or your academic library, any other kind of library. I do know a lot of communities do the one book, one community. Sometimes, even though that book is a, a book for adults or young adults, many times people will also take a children's book that um, complements that particular book and do the one book, one community with the children's book as well. And that is a great way to bring in parents and children to share a reading experience together, because I think that is so important. 
We can always do book displays, um, nice book displays will catch the eyes of people. We have four, well actually we have five displays. We have a display case when you come into um, our department and then we have displays throughout the area. They catch people's eyes as soon as they come in. And I will tell you, we almost have to replenish those books from the book display almost daily. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. It's drawing people's attention and you're actually checking out and using these materials. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> exactly. And what we do, make it simple. When we put up a display, we let's say the display will hold 15 books. Well, we'll do a list of maybe about 20, 25 books that could go on the display. And then our student employees, if they see that there are books missing, they just go down the list and pull some more books to keep it refreshed. And a lot of times before um, you run to the end of the books, some of the books you had up there initially have returned. So we've never run out of books when it comes to this. Some other ideas, of course, you're doing um, book clubs. We've talked about ideas for book clubs. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday is a good time to do it. A lot of the books are centered around art and music. So if you have a, events in your school or in your community, it's a great time to um, use this. Um, one thing that I have seen done, there's a um, local jazz festival in a town nearby even though it's for adults, um, there are some books about jazz artists that they actually read to the children and then let them participate in the music and the dance. Hmm. Your Community Reader's Day, oh, and I was thinking with art, think about all of our award-winning books with illustrations. All the ones that have won illustrator awards, they can be used so many times with any kind of art hmm. projects that go on. Community Readers Day, I know that's something that a lot of places have, and a lot of times they have one specifically for children. So that's how it's a little different from that other program, because your Community Readers Day, you can just do that for children and, ch and choose maybe um, a book for young children and then one for young adults and make it a community-wide um, project. A lot of schools like to do author study centers, so you can choose an award-winning author and you can have books that they have written. Um, and some of them will be Coretta Scott King award winning books. Some may not have won their books, the award, but many of the authors have won multiple awards. And a lot of people do mock Caldecott, mock um, Newberry programs. How about implementing a mock CSK program? It's another great way. And like I say, there are many, many other ways that you can do. The, um, you can use these materials. These are just a few that I wanted to highlight this morning. If you're actually working in a K-12 school, there, you know we have our standards and there are so many of the award-winning books that actually align with your national and state standards. I just pulled out a few of the national and state ones that I have seen, but almost any of the standards that you follow we will have CSK award winning books that you can um, use for each standard. And I'm just gonna show you a few um, examples. I actually did a workshop on align, aligning these books to standards. And I went through and looked at the, st with the standards and found some of these books. This one was for um, third grade social studies. And with the objective was to analyze the impact of contributions made by diverse historical figures in local communities and regions over time. If you've read the book, Dave the Potter, he um, was a former slave. Um, it's just a beautiful book and it meets that objective perfectly. English language arts, third grade. When you describe characters in a story and explain how their actions contribute to the sequence of events, Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson is a perfect book for this one. Understand how the visual arts have affected and are reflected in the cultural traditions and history of the United States. This is on fifth grade visual arts, Radiant Child. It's a perfect match. 
This is a science one, grade, um, grade three, how environmental conditions determine how well plants survive and grow, that seeds of change. And grade two, um, dance, use words or images to describe possible meanings observed in dance. Um, Firebird, um, it was actually um, written by Misty Copeland and she's a wonderful dancer. Oh yes. And, and Christopher Myers does a wonderful job with this book to just look at the movement. And if a child, you're thinking about having a second grader to sit here and use words to describe the possible meaning. She is so expressive and his artwork is so expressive. It will be even more of a joy for the teacher as it is for the actual children. And with this, I, you will see that I did use a lot of elementary books. And that was because this particular um, presentation was for K-5, but we do have books that will fit curriculum for um, middle school as well as high school. So we are celebrating 50 years of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. It's been an exciting year for us. And the committee has just come such a long way and look at the just the number of wonderful books that are out here to celebrate the Black experience for today's youth. Um, and we are celebrating the whole year. So um, we didn't pick a particular day or month within the year 2019. We started at January 1st and we'll celebrate all the way until December 31st. We have something that we're calling the 50-50 initiative. And this is why I love doing webinars because I get to reach so many people with so many states. Because since it was our 50th anniversary, we wanted all 50 states to celebrate the 50th anniversary. And that's why we call it the 50-50 initiative. And what we're doing, we're challenging librarians, educators, lovers of children's literature, across the nation to hold some programs. And these can be classes, presentations, speeches, as long as they highlight the committee, the award-winning books, authors, or illustrators. And we would love to have some, we would love to have a presentation in all 50 states across the United States. So if you, after listening to this, <coughs> that you want to accept our challenge, um, you can email the details of your program to um, Brenda Anaset. She's our um, chair elect and she's chair of our programming committee. And we also ask that you um, CC it to um, diversity at ALA.org so that your estate will be recognized. There's actually an, there's active, actually an um, interactive map on our presentation website. And once you send us the information about your program, you will be, you will get your dot on the map. And when you click on that dot, it will tell us a little bit about your program. So you think about it. Think how well your principal or your director or your dean will be quite impressed if one of your programs were actually highlighted on a national website. Yeah. Um, and with that, we give you the opportunity to um, submit photographs. So if you do have an author come in or there is a even even a book display, if you want to send us a, a picture of that or show us something from one of your programs or a um, book discussion group, we will appreciate receiving that information. <clears throat> yeah, I was just checking out the map myself here. And for those of you in Nebraska, because that's where I'm based, there's nobody in Nebraska yet, so you could be the first one. And we do have some people who are a little behind sending in their information. So we're going to start sending out reminders because we know so many people have done these programs because um, they told me they have at conferences I attend. Um, but I'm not seeing them on the map. So I'll start reaching out to some of these people, but if you know people have done programs or you've done one, please send us that information so you can be included in our 5050 initiative and you will gain your rightful spot on our map. 
Right, right. So this isn't just someone who's actually asking about this. This isn't just for upcoming. This can be for things you've already done in the past, in the year already. Yes, anything from 2019 yeah. has a focus on CSK books, authors, illustrators. You mm -hmm. can't submit that. Yeah. Awesome. And if you would like to do a program and sometimes you just don't know where to get started. I actually gave you some ideas earlier, but if you want a little bit more, um, simply contact Brenda or myself and she and the members of the program committee will help you create a program. That's one of the things we don't mind doing. I was um, sure. program chair of the program committee before I became chair of the committee. And I can't tell you the number of programs I've helped people um, establish or find ways to help them get in touch with some illustrators or authors or give them some good ideas or recommendations. But we are here to help you because if you're going to help promote the committee and these wonderful books, we're behind you to help you do so. As I said, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary throughout the year, and but we did have a wonderful time at ALA Annual last January, excuse me, last June in Washington, D.C. Um, some of the things that did happen, I hope some of you were there, but if you were not there, um, we did have the 50th anniversary gala, and it was actually held at the Library of Congress and Dr. Hayden actually um, hosted us. It was an unbelievable event. Um, even though I've been a librarian for close to 35 years, I had never actually been in the Library of Congress. So mm -hmm. it was a wonderful experience for me. And if I actually um, wrote a blog post about my experience at the gala. So if you would like to read that, just go to the CSK webpage and you'll actually see a link for our blog, and it is one of our blog posts, but it was a magical night. That's the only way I can explain that. We did have um, a celebration for the Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. Since it was an odd year, um, the award was given to a practitioner, and so we did have an event for that. And every year we have the Coretta Scott King Annual Awards Breakfast. That is held every Sunday morning during ALA Annual. And we had a record number of attendees this year. We had over 800 people attend the breakfast um, in June. Um, and we would love to keep that momentum going. Um, if you've never been to the breakfast, if you're at ALA Annual, it is worth attending. Um, I've heard people say there's nothing like it. And I have attended lots of different award ceremonies, but our breakfast is wonderful because every winner, whether they're um, honor or the actual winner, they do get to um, give a speech. Okay. And speeches are always so touching, so touching. So um, if you get a chance, please, please attend. Um, the Credit Scott King Book Awards Committee is very different from most award committees because when you think of the Caldecott, there's just the Caldecott jury or the Newberry. There's just the Newberry jury. But with the Credit Scott King Book Awards Committee, we have approximately nine standing committees in addition to our two juries. So you can join one of our standing committees and to do so, um, here are the things you have to do. You do have to be a member of ALA. Um, you do have to be a member of EMERG. And then you will have a CSK volunteer form you can complete. And after you complete that form, a chair will review the forms and appoint volunteers to committees as needed. Um, so most of our committees are two year appointments, but there are some that are one year and sometimes you might need to um, just fill out the term for someone who had to vacate the term for um, a bear for you know, any reason whatsoever. But 
It's easy to join our committees and we have just so many different committees. We can use your skills. I'm sure that there's one or more committee that your skills can be used from um, publication committee to marketing committee. There's the book donation grant committee and it goes on and on and on. Um, there's a technology committee. So any of your skills, we can use you. And then if you want to join a CSK jury, as I said, we have the Virginia Hamilton and the Book Awards jury. Um, you do have to complete and submit a detailed volunteer application. And once again, you do have to be a member of ALA and EMERG. Um, the nominating committee reviews the applications and then the nominating committee will actually select the people that they will put on the jury ballot. And once you're on the ballot, um, all EMERT members will elect the jury through the general mem membership voting process. So if some of you, if you're already a member of EMERT, um, all you have to do is make sure that you get to be um, on the CSK list as well. And you can um, email me with details about that or um, anyone associated with CSK. And we want you to get involved as well. Um, I've given some links here because it'll tell you some ways of getting involved. Um, there's some information about volunteering for a committee. This is the actual link that you can use to volunteer for a committee. And we do have a PDF of a membership brochure. And that's something that you can use if you're doing um, programs or going places, speaking on CSK. There's membership brochure. And sometimes if you're doing a presentation and you may want some maybe goodies or a few freebies to go along with your presentation, let me know. Um, sometimes we will have some things that we may be able to send you. Um, we don't usually have things that if you have a group of 500 people or something, but if you're having you know, 30, 40 people or, or, small, or less, we can usually come up with something that we can give you to give away as door prizes, or if nothing else, we can give you some sort of bookmarks to go along with your program. I guess I'm out of slides, so I'm wondering if you have any <laughs> questions for me. That's perfect. All right. Um, thank you very much, Alan. Anybody have any questions? Um, anything you want to ask um, about the Chris Scott King Book Awards or the programs or anything that he's shared today? Um, any comments? Um, you have anything you've done at your library that you'd like to share about? Please do type into the question section. Um, we did have a couple of comments during um, saying fantastic, fantastic selection of books. Thank you. Someone did comment. And um, thank you for the programming ideas. I think that is also very um, useful. There is just so much on the website um, of ways that you can do something with these books um, besides just, you know, you said, you know, displaying them and, you know, mentioning that here's the ones that won the awards this year. Um, this, I think, should be a thing that libraries do every year with them, not just, you know, definitely push that's 50 years we've been doing this. <laughs> um, but um, every year when the, they're announced in the summer, um, that's when you can start um, you know, working them into your programming, figure out what you can do something with them in you know, the next six months at your library, as they're announced every year at ALA. So. Yes, and they're actually announced in January at midwinter. Oh, oh midwinter. Oh, okay. We yeah, have breakfast at it's, um, it's, uh, the regular annual. Right. We celebrate at annual. That gives all the winners a chance to come in and celebrate, actually get their awards. Um, in the summer, but they will be announced in January at the Youth Media Awards. Right. Okay. So look for that next January, in a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. And I will actually, um, Krista, I'll actually send you some information about the Youth Media Award and give you the exact day and time that it's going to be held because it is streamed live. If mm -hmm. people, um, are, are not able to attend and it is fun to view live all of the winners. Um, so yeah. that would be great. I think here we here at the Library Commission, we have a um, youth and children's um, services coordinator who help deals with anything, you, you know, obviously youth and, and YA type books for our library, Sally Snyder. And I think that's something that she sits, she watches every year. She, you know, gets on her computer and then 
checks in to see what's coming up for the next year of all the awards. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. I love being a part of it. Absolutely. Um, no, it's no questions coming through, but another comment, very informative, great presentation. That's a good information. Definitely. <laughs> So um, it looks like nobody has any desperate, urgent question, questions they want to ask you right now, but that's okay. Uh, there is Alan's information, contact information there. As Of course, you can reach out to him or to you know the other people you're talking about, depending on what, how you might want to get involved um, um, with the award at um, later if you want to. So just wait and see if anybody has anything desperate you want to ask right now while we have him here. <laughs> You have my undivided attention, and that doesn't happen often. <laughs> um, I know this was actually something, Sally, that I mentioned her. She was the one who recommended that I um, bring you on the show. She had seen a presentation you had done uh, for a group she's involved with, obviously, with Children's and Youth Services. Um, so I'm going to, she, she's not here this week. She's actually out at um, the Collaborative Summer Library Program annual meeting. That's the group that does summer reading programs every year. Um, so it doesn't look anybody has any questions right now, but that's fine. You can ask him at any time. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Alan, for being with us here this morning. This is great. Um, so much information. Um, I've got myself to notes the things that I want to, you know, make sure that I keep up on. Make sure that we get the new book here at the Library Commission. We do have a, col a collection uh, uh, of books here, and I notice we have previous versions of it, but not the 50th anniversary of the awards book um, and like I said also promoting about the grant and the book club kit information and everything so um, oh we have another comment from um, some of our staff do watch this in another meeting room here at the library commission and they said we enjoyed your presentation as well oh well, thank you thank you Lisa yeah all right so I think we will um, then wrap it up for today. As I said, this show is being recorded and the recording will be posted on our website. The slides will be available as well. I think, Alan, you were going to send me a PDF version of those. I will. Sure. All right. Email them to me whenever you get a chance today. I am going to um, pull back the presenter control to my screen so I can show you guys where all this is. That should be... There we go. Yeah, this is today's session. Um, but if we go back to our Encompass Live main page, uh, Nebraska um, Encompass Live is so far. Um, if you go to the Library Commission's website, nlc.nebraska.gov, you can search for Encompass Live. But if you use your search engine of choice, Google, whatever, so far on the internet, we're the only thing called this. So nobody else can go. So if you do <coughs> do your googling and type in Encompass Live, you'll come up with our page right off the bat. Um, so these are our upcoming shows. We have coming up today's shows so here still, but <clears throat> excuse me, right beneath that is a link to our archive. So this is where the recording for today will be. It'll be at the top of the page here. Uh, this is uh, last week's sh um, show uh, where we had we just recording last week. We didn't have slides, but for today's um, once once everything is done and processed, uploaded to YouTube, I have the slides and have those uploaded and everything. Um, there'll be two links here, and this will be available. Everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready and available here. We also push out that information on our Twitter. Uh, Facebook and mailing list that we have here through the Library Commission. So look for that as well. And while I'm, mentioning, while I'm showing you the archives here, we do have a search feature. I did mention at the beginning of the show, we've got lots and lots of topics on here. Uh, Encompass Live started in 2009. So we do have, and we do have here on our page, all of our archives going back to the very beginning. So if I scroll all the way down here, you'd have January 2009. So we do have a search feature here now where you can search everything if you want to, or just the most recent 12 months if you just want really current information. Um, so do be aware when you are searching in here and looking at our archives, uh, just pay attention to the date of when a session was presented. Some things the service might have changed, might be different, links might not work anymore. Some things might not exist anymore in the past 10 years. You know, things do change. <laughs> um, so just pay attention to the original date when you are watching something. Uh, but we are, you know, librarians. This is what we do. We gather and, and archive information. And so we will always have the full record, um, archive up on there, even the ones that do become outdated just for historic purposes. Uh, we do also have a Facebook page. You can see I've got links here to like the page, but I've got it open over here. So if you are a big Facebook user, you like to get information there, we do post uh, reminders of shows. Here's a link showing people um, posts to log in this morning to remind people to come in on the fly today's show. Um, when our recordings are ready, we post on here. 
Um, so if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. I post things there just maybe a couple of times a week. Um, so you won't be inundated with things, but it is a way that you can keep up on what we are doing here on Encompass Live. Um, so that is everything about today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when it is our pretty sweet tech. Can librarians teach robotics? Sure, why not? <laughs> Um, Amanda Sweet is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission and a couple of months ago she started a, a monthly series called Pretty Sweet Tech. Get it? Amanda Sweet? Pretty Sweet? Yeah. <laughs> She's got a, a logo there. Um, where every week, every month, the last Wednesday of the month will be her Pretty Sweet Tech um, presentation. So if you're into technology, if you're the techie type person at your library, hers is the show to always sign up for. Um, and next week she'll be talking about librarians teaching robotics. So if you are interested in that, um, if you're wondering if you could do it, how could you possibly pull it off, she will tell you all about that next week. So please do sign up for that. Any of our other shows we have coming up, um, I'll make note that the one right after that, it does say there is no Encompass Live this week. This is the one week of the year. Um, we are here every Wednesday except for um, the week of our state annual conference, our state library association's annual conference. That's the one week that I take off because <laughs> I'm at conference instead. So um, there won't be a, con a session after the Pretty Sweet Tech one because um, we'll be at the <clears throat> Nebraska Library Association, which we're actually doing jointly with the Iowa Library Association this year. Um, and this is our Nebraska School Librarians Association as well. So, um, and any dates you see open here, I've got things I'm working on, negotiating with people and getting descriptions. So any open dates you see, keep an eye on our page um, for what they, um, the new topics might be. So thank you everybody for attending. Thank you so much, Alan, this was great. Um, I had a great time learning about everything and, and uh, just, you know, finding, as usual, more books that I need to read. <laughs> I do read some, you know, why things myself, just because, you know, it's a good story is a good story, so. <laughs> I agree. All right. So thank you, everybody, and I hope we'll see you um, another time on Encompass Live. Bye.